Um, and I'm finding myself challenged to overcome my commitment to super progressive lefty radical feminism alongside, mm. alongside um, the connection that I feel to my masculinity to, uh, to opening doors, pulling out chairs, and doing the, the yeah. behaviors I was taught are proper and correct and you know, flattering and, and empowering. Mm. And find myself uh, confronted at, at the prospect of saying, I got this planned. Right. In the face of, um, I mean, clearly, like, it's not going great when I say, well, you know, do you have a place that you'd like to eat and when's going to work for you? Like, that, that's not working out great. No. And I, like, <laughs> I'm willing I, to reevaluate. Can I give you, um, like, yeah, a like, I think you see what's up. feminist perspective? Please. Because that's how I, I would identify mm -hmm. that way. Um, <laughs> is that I believe that the true like next wave of feminism, what it was really calling for, is honoring of the feminine. Yes. And what feminism did is fucking incredible, and we all owe our life to it. And what it looked at and said was, that's where the power is, we all need the power. So we said, let's everybody have the place where the power is. And the next wave of that is saying, the power also includes this. And that includes you honoring the part of her that wants to be cherished in that way. And that's actually saying the feminine, not just women, the feminine is as valuable as the masculine in her. So I believe that that is a true feminist response to a woman. Mm. Yeah. Um, but I am going to call a little bullshit on you a little bit, right? Because everything she says is right. But this is more about your nervous system than your belief system, mm -hmm. right? Your nervous system is what's stopping you from taking the lead. Would you say that? Did you notice that? Yes. Yeah. So your nervous system, not your belief system, and you'll call it your belief system, but really it's your nervous system mm -hmm. being able to actually step in and go, okay, baby, I got this, right? That can be changed, but it ha you have to bring awareness to it, right? You have to be able to say like, okay, yes, what Kendra said is absolutely true, and honoring the feminine, I mean, is there any doubt? Would all of you that spoke consider yourself feminists on some level, right? Some, le some spectrum, right? <clears throat> uh, so you've got three or four women weeping at being led, uh, if that's not telling you, and, and I can tell you over hundreds of workshops, it's always the same, always the same. So this is more about your nervous system. So tell me about your nervous system. What happened when you stepped in to lead? Uh, I, I think I can talk. I, I had a, a, a sensation of a hesitation that I would do it wrong or that I would. So you were um, afraid. Or that I would cause harm. You were afraid? Yeah. OK, great. No, that's, I, mean, I just want to boil it down, right? So you were afraid. Sure, yeah. Right? Okay. So, nothing wrong with that. And in a moment, in a relational moment, what we try to do, at least in, in this practice, is we try to make art with what's real. Right? So, like, I don't want you to have to worry about a thing, but I want you to know I respect you deeply as a woman. Right? Is that okay with you? Does that feel good? Right? Is that okay with you? How does that feel to you? Then, she's, then you're really honoring the woman, right? And bring, sometimes owning your fear is oftentimes like, I have fear of actually stepping in and leading you because I was told it was wrong. But fuck it, I'm gonna pick the restaurant, I'm gonna do this, does that feel okay to you? She would respond, yeah, 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 she would. So at, there's a certain level of really, you don't want to narrate all of the stuff that's going on, but it's important for us to have enough emotional awareness, which is why I'm a big fan of meditation, because that helps cultivate emotional awareness, to kind of know, like, wow, I'm afraid, because of, the story doesn't really matter mm -hmm. in a relational moment. In fact, the more story you go into, the more disconnected the relationship gets. But I'm afraid, in two sentences, two sentences. So just to practice, could turn and, and, and face it. Tell me your name, my friend. Oh, that's right. So just, so just to practice, 
We're going to pretend that you're on the beginning of your date again. And you're just going to, in two sentences, narrate your fear and make sure it's OK that you take the lead. So it sounds something like, just kind of like I said, I'll let you use your own words, but really just a couple sentences. Yeah. I'm afraid to take control of the, of the next few hours of your life. Um, but I'd like to, and, I, and, and I'd like to communicate that I really respect you. And, uh, and I'm excited to spend time with you. Would that be OK with you? <laughs> Good. Good. I, I trust you more now than I did throughout the whole time. Good. Yeah. Because she could feel the unresolved conflict, and it made you untrustable. All of them, all men, right? So women are like, they have these like crazy ninja senses. Like, <laughs> dudes, like, uh, it, there's not a congruence in what he's saying and what's actually going on inside of him. And then that occurs to the feminine is non-trustable. That's why when you're jealous, you can say, man, I'm jealous. But, wow, like you smiled at that guy, and I, I got really jealous. Because she'll feel it. She'll feel it. Right. Yeah. Thanks. OK. Good. What's that? It's all good to me hearing you say that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. There you go. So right. I, I'm looking for the, like, the, my, the, the felt experience of that consent conversation without having like, a long, complex conversation about like. Right. Well, OK, here, let me tell you about, about consent. Um, uh, completely needed and Verbal consent, um, uh, so let me figure out how to say this without totally shooting myself in the foot. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're so, listening. So you've already got consent to take her on a date. That consent has already been given, yes? You guys already agreed to that. Okay. Between there and the next move, which would be physical contact, right? Um, your, your job is to feel what she's a yes to, trusting that she'll do this if she's a no, right? So you all it, remember this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Super so you important. got consent to go on a date. Like he got consent. He got consent to put his hand around, right? Now he put his arm around and he grabbed her arm, and he could feel that she relaxed into it. There's your consent, right? She relaxed into it, and then he pulled her a little closer and said, is that OK? I actually said, is that OK? Right? And she said, yeah. So you know, there's, a, there's a way to, op to really kind of like just neutralize everything based on the consent. But of course, like if you were going to touch her, you'd have to ask, is it OK if I touch you? Right? Is it OK if I hold you tight? Right? That's different than every step of the way. Right? Does, that, does that actually feel good to you, ladies? Yeah. Yes. No, no, to be asked every step of the way, like, no, no, no. can I touch you now? Can I, can but I? Here's part of why, and this is actually where belief system and nervous system interweave. The reason why is that often where that's coming from is I'm, I'm going to abdicate my responsibility for how I feel to you. It was similar, we, so we talked about this with someone else earlier, but about we want someone else to do something so that we won't have to feel blank. And there's a way that your belief system and your nervous system and you're going like, I want somehow for this to be handled so I don't feel the way that I feel when I make a move. Mm -hmm. Rather than taking full responsibility for your own feeling. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is mine. Actually, it's not mine to hand to her so she can say something that will then abdicate my responsibility for handling my own feelings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And that takes, that takes courage. Right? And you know, usually these things start in childhood where you know, sometimes taking the lead or being bold wasn't necessarily encouraged or, or celebrated, or maybe it was even punished. I don't, I don't know your history, but sometimes that's what happens. You see a lot in men where they disown their killer because their father was abusive. Right? Or nobody ever taught them what a healthy warrior looked like. So, or there was a, like an alcoholic in the family, and so I'm never going to be violent like that. And then you disown the part of you that would ravish her, and then she's going, "Why doesn't he? Book? He's a nice guy, but why doesn't he ravish me?" Yeah, I, I just see men do harm, and I don't want to do harm. That's right. Who did harm when you were younger? 
When did that start? Um, my, my best friend was raped when okay. we were 15. Great, okay. Well, that's a pretty big thing, yeah? Yeah. 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 So that's going to stay in you. And, you know, you just have to work with it. You just found a great edge. Start there and just keep kind of assuming that once you have consent, she'll let you know. And you can check, like, we good? Does this feel good? Right? But the best way to do it, the way that women would prefer you do it, again, you know, you guys can yell at me if I'm off here, but the way we prefer you do it is to feel them. Because they'll tell you no. They'll tell you yes, but their whole body's a fucking no. Yes. And if you're not feeling the no, right, and you're still leaning in for the kiss, but she stopped breathing, but she, she didn't say no, right? I mean, that's not consent either, if we're paying attention. Yeah. So part of what we're learning is to be super sensitive, super sensitive. Women have been trained to, to, to not say no for tens of thousands of years of abuse and rape and murder and burning at the stake. Like, they said no, they ended up out of the tribe, basically, right, and on their own, or they were beaten or pill I mean, this is still in the feminine nervous system. We all know this, yeah? Mm -hmm. Right? So, so that's why feeling her body is, is always more preferable to her. Now, if you can't feel, then you need to come to a workshop and work on your feeling body. <laughs> right? right? Or you need to do something to kind of loosen your body so that you're actually, your actual feeling body actually is awake. And we'll work on this in a, in a minute.